Greetings and welcome to Parsing John. This is the last video for this page. I've got one more page with verses 11 through 13 on it. We're only going to cover uh, verse number 10 of John chapter 1 today. So we've got our rubric right here. You should take a moment to refresh your memory of everything that we're looking for as we go through and parse these words. If we see any repeats as we've done before, like Erot, where's Erot? Yeah, there it is. Uh, if we've already parsed something like this, we're going to, we're going to leave it alone and just draw an arrow from it, unless it's too crazy. Okay, first things first, reading aloud. In mundo erat, et mundus per ipsum factus est, et mundus eum non cognovit. Okay, now we want to find our verb first, so that it can tell us if we're looking for a singular or plural subject. You've got in mundo here, which is a prepositional phrase. We're going to go ahead and block that off so we could do it later. And then we come across erat, <laughs> the one I brought up earlier. We've already parsed that. It's third person, singular, imperfect, active, and indicative. And it just needs was. So we're going to just write that in there. We know we want a singular subject for this. We've got an at here, which could be connecting two verbs together. But since mundus is not a verb, that's not happening. So at is connecting this clause with this clause. So our subject has to be somewhere before at. In mundo is a prepositional phrase, so that does not work as our subject. We need to look further back to figure out what that was. And that's the most likely candidate for a subject is going to be whatever or whoever was the previous subject. And as we look back at verse 9, we've got this relative clause here, which does not have our subject. I've lost track of whatever word I was about to say. It does not have our, our word, subject visible written out. So you have to go out of that to the main clause there. We've got where looks. Looks there is our subject. So we know light is the subject. The light was what? In mundo. Here in is taking the ablative, so plus a, b, l. And that's going to be ablative, singular, and masculine. Why masculine? Because if so we take a look at its other form here, us here tells us that it's probably masculine. This would mean ablative, a place where? In world. Okay, so the light was in world. Since we don't have the word light down here, I'm going to pencil in it. I know that doesn't really clear up much, but it's the safest thing for us to do without violating translation laws. Not that there are official translation laws, at least not as far as they were. Okay, et is simple, it means and. Mundus is, since it's got us as its ending, it's going to be nominative, singular, and masculine, and it's going to be the subject of this new sentence. Mundus what? Well, per is a preposition, so that starts a prepositional phrase, not a verb. Factus doesn't match the case that per wants. We close the prepositional phrase there. We've got us, so clearly it's matching mundus. It could be acting as an adjective. As we look ahead, we've got est, a verb of being, and factus is the fourth principal part in the nominative singular masculine form of a verb. So this Together, these two words are a verb. This is a paraphrastic verb. It's a round. They, well, this is a roundabout way of saying an action in Latin. They have to use more than one word to do it. So these two go together. We know this one is going to be nominative, singular, masculine. Verbs don't normally have gender or case. So it's est. We know it's going to be third person, and that matches with the singular. Since factus and s are together, we know this is going to be a perfect tense. If it had been eram, we would know that it would be pluperfect. If it had been ero, we'd know it would be future perfect. This is going to be passive, passive paraphrastic after all. And it's going to be an indicative verb. So no special clause here, which is nice. And this has two basic ways of being translated. We can translate it with the perfect and the passive being very clear, has been verbed, or we could translate it in the e easier passive perfect, was verbed. Okay, and the meaning of this one is to become, no, yeah, to become, be made. Since we are talking about an object here, made makes the most sense. We're going to go with the easy perfect was made. But we could also say, of course, has been. If we wanted to make clear that this is not an imperfect action, oh, we don't want that small, but is a completed action. 
It's up to you which one you would choose. I'm going to go with the easy one, as I said. All right, so, and the world, sorry, just world, no articles in Latin, and world was made, or has been made. Per ipsum. Per is going to take the accusative case, take a look at ipsum from ipse, ipsa, ipsum. So technically it could be neuter, but neuter what? In order to figure out which it is, neuter or masculine accusative, and it's, the neuter accusative would be the same thing, we need the context of what's come before. And we've seen this in verses 1 through 5, where we was talking about the creation of everything. And per ipsum was used there, and it was referring to the word. And what was the word? Deo. Singular masculine. Through him. Technically, we should capitalize that. All right. And world through him was made. Et, and repetition of mundus. Take an arrow over here. Through everything. Oops. World. Again, our subject is a us. Cognowit. Got a third person singular ending because of that T. Cogno. Cognoscere, cognovi, so that would put it in the perfect tense, and it's active, and it is indicative, and this would be uh, cognitive, understand, no, probably understand, except in perfect. So you've got a non, I'm going to go ahead and do, did not understand. Did not understand what? Well, a direct object. If we look at the only word left for us to tackle, we've got eum, which is accusative, singular, masculine, of is, ea, id. Eum is the accusative form of the masculine and the singular. And that's going to refer to this ipsum, which in turn refers back to something in verses 1 through 5, which we don't have. It's in a drawer somewhere. You would say him. Okay, so we've gone through, we've done every word in verse 10. We can go ahead and take a look at our translation. It was in the world, it being the light, and the world was made through him. Who's him? Well, it's both the light and the word as spoken of before. Verse 2 tells us that. And the world did not understand him. So there's our translation. We're done with this verse. I hope going through this has been helpful for you, and I hope you join me for our next video when we take a look at verse 11 and probably about half of verse 12, unless verse 12 is shorter than I remember. Our next actual video is going to be the Greek going through those verses, but I'm rambling. Sorry. I hope you all have a good day. Farewell. Well.